All right, Graham Jesus and Matthews from Fansided Daily, DDT.com. And ahead of the upcoming episode, WWE Legends biography on A&E, we're talking to the subject himself, WWE Hall of Famer and Mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, Glenn Jacobs, Kane. Kane, what's going on, my man? How that? Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate hey. that. Hey, Graham, I appreciate you. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. We've had a lot of great episodes of this WWE Legends biography series on A&E. Very happy to see you're going to be selected as part of it and your career spotlighted. Uh, we've you know, obviously seen a lot of you in recent years in the politics realm, in WWE, inducted to the Hall of Fame just a couple of years ago. Uh, can you talk about why this is the right time? And we've also had a book on you as well, released a couple of years ago, written by <laughs> yourself. Talk about like why this is the right time, if you like, to have a documentary spotlighting your career released. Well, during the Attitude Era, the internet was still an infant, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, there there wasn't like now where people could peek behind the curtain and see what's going on and see Kane as a real person or uh, look and you know see these storylines and what really happened and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I think it's it's really cool for the fans to be able to do that now. Um, on one hand. Frankly, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of some of the stuff that we see on the internet and the spoilers and, you know, all that sort of stuff, because it, it just spoils the, you know, the show in many cases. But nevertheless, it is cool to go back and be able to see, okay, what really happened? And what was this person's thoughts on that? You know, so-and-so saying this, uh, and, and it's funny, I see that a lot, you know, so-and-so says this, I was like, well, yeah, I was there. That's not what happened. This is what happened. But, and it's cool to be able to actually tell that story. And I think the fans enjoy it because they get to the answers to the questions that they've had for, in my case, almost 30 years, uh, and, and they get to see them. And I think that's just really cool. Yeah, no, just you talk about the, like the internet as well and the fact that that plays and how much that's grown in the last 30 years since you start out your career. Is that part of it as well? Like with the mystique of the Kane character when you first start out in the late 90s and 97? I mean, there were still like dirt sheets, so to speak, back then with like stuff sure. like that. So that stuff was sort of around even back then, but it wasn't at the height as it is now with the right. Internet. Do you feel like with that sort of stuff, it kind of takes away from the magic of like a Kane character in 2023 and why that sort of period can't be sure. replicated? Yeah, I do. And again, that's just the change you know, that we all have to um, that we all have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some really good things, too. And I think WWE does a very good job, especially on social media. You see. Uh, the entertainers, performers in the company itself, uh, you know, being able to utilize social media in a way that really strengthens the bond with the audience, which is what you're trying to do with anything. Uh, but I think that we did have an advantage because you didn't have all that stuff back then. You know, so Kane was a mystery because unless you really wanted to dig and take some time into, you know, finding out who Kane was and who's this guy named Glenn Jacobs and all this. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't just there with at, uh, your fingertips at the stroke of a keyboard, right? Um, so in that way, I, I think I was really fortunate uh, to experience that in my career um, because I think that was a much a much purer form of entertainment than what we might have now where, mm -hmm. you know, so-and-so knows that this is, you know, these guys are really buddies backstage and all that or whatever, uh, you know, and you could actually... No, this business is a lot like magic, right? And you have the wires and the trick is to not, not let the audience see the wires so you can suspend their disbelief. Everybody knows this entertainment, but you don't want to, while you're in the moment, believe that it's entertainment. You want to believe that it is real. And I, I think that we were able to do that because, um, you know, the, the folks just couldn't, like I said, just couldn't Google something and get the answer to it. It just took a lot more effort to go. Yeah, I mean, you talk about that as far as like the Kane character today. Let's say it happened in 2023. I think it's, at least with me, I think in my opinion, I think it's possible. I think, but like you said, though, it's a lot more difficult with social yeah. media, the internet yeah. and stuff like that. So would you agree as far as like if the Kane and Taker were still at his like prime right now? And it's, you just take that same exact story. Everything happens the exact same way. Maybe a little bit different. Like his times are different. And I don't know if you can do the exact same stuff, but you know, everything kind of from that feud, you supplement it in 2023. Do you think it would still work or just not work to the same extent as it did in the late nineties? It, it, it could still work. Uh, it, it would have to be done differently yep. uh, because Kane would have to talk smack to the Undertaker on Twitter, which would be very strange. <laughs> uh, but, but nevertheless, it, it could because it's a timeless story. And ultimately, this story is about two brothers who get along sometimes and don't get along sometimes. Uh, and the rest is really just bells and whistles. I mean, the story was amazing because I, I think it was uh, really 
mythological storytelling. I mean, you had these characters and they had uh, stories behind them. Uh, you know, most characters in WWE are that person or uh, part of that person, part of the personality trait, in mm -hmm. many cases, turned up to an 11. Uh, Kane and Undertaker were true characters, right? I mean, they were they were not just dudes that were, you know, this, this is me, but, you know, uh, I, I turned my personality up on TV. I mean, they, they were different characters than Mark Calloway and Glenn Jacobs are in real life. Uh, and ultimately, I, I think that was that was what attracted people to it because everybody can relate to sibling rivalry and this was sibling rivalry just done on an epic scale. Yeah. I mean, especially with one of the biggest names in the business at that point, the undertaker, you know, you come in right away, put in a program with one of the biggest stars in WWE at that point. And not only that, cause we've seen that a lot in the last 25, 30 years prior to that program since then, where someone kind of gets shoved into a place of prominence and it either doesn't work out or they stay at that level. And you're among those elite few, I think, that stayed at that elite level for the remainder of your time in the ring for the next 25 years. And in addition to not being hurt as well, you didn't suffer many injuries, which also helped your case a lot. Uh, do you kind of attest to your longevity to that as far as, I mean, what else? I mean, in addition to the lack of injuries, what do you attest your longevity to in the wrestling ring over the last 25 years? I just showed up every day, worked hard. <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, and I was also, I, I wasn't selfish. Uh, you know, sometimes people were like, well, you know, why is Kane putting this person over? Well, the reason is because it's good for the company. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and you know, you always need new people coming along. And in the end, you know, I, I stayed there for a long time uh, because of that. Because yeah. I think I understood that it wasn't about me; it was about the success of the company. If the company's successful, I was going to be successful. Um, so, but, but there's no secret, man. It's just it's just working hard and showing up. And <laughs> that's most of the battle. That's most of the battle in everything. Yeah, no, it is. And you did that a lot, especially in that like 2000s period after you unmasked. There's a long period where you're helping to elevate and put over a lot of different people, like you said, showing up to work, doing what was best for the business, regardless of who you're in a program with. Um, you did that each and every time. Was there a point where you feel like in your career, obviously the Undertaker feud was a big part of this, but even after that, because it's not only the feud itself, but like the aftermath that I think really establishes you as one of the greats and at that bulletproof point where you could lose to practically anyone and you're still Kane and people still love you. Do you feel like there was a point that really cemented you at that level aside from the Taker stuff? Man, um, I don't know if I can uh, point to a single uh, incident event or incident or sure. point in time but yeah there was and i remember someone telling me and i was a little frustrated it's like ah you know is uh you know, I'm, I'm doing this and you know why am i not here yeah. and then someone told me it's like dude it doesn't matter it's like all you have to do is to turn the switch go out you know blow the pyro and choke slam somebody and kane is right back you know <laughs> right back there at the top and and, and that's true I, th I think once you have that legacy it doesn't matter anymore um and then the nice part about that is though you know then you can help um other folks uh, elevate themselves and yeah. you know that's actually one of the things that brought me the most uh, satisfaction is now you know towards the end of my career i'm working with people like roman reigns seth rollins and these others and now you look at them and, and they're huge superstars and they're the people carrying the company and i like to think part of it is you know early on in their run with wwe uh me and other folks like me were willing to to help them along and to get them up to our level and now probably exceeding that in some cases <laughs> yeah and you did that in many cases like you said you worked with a lot of different people over the course of your run from the beginning with undertaker and that attitude era gang up until the early 2010s the mid 2010s with people like you said seth rollins roman reigns pretty much every crop of characters at every generation in time you mentioned roman reigns and the one memory that i remember of you two specifically i think a lot of people would attest this the royal rumble in 2015 and like people still talk about it all these years later and the fan reaction and stuff like that your role in it helping to elevate roman reigns the fan reaction not really being what it was can you remember if or can you take me through if you remember in that moment what was going through your mind when you and Big Show are eliminating the entire field? Roman has to go over. People aren't taking to Roman the way that I guess people expected to. Can you take me through that night a little bit? Yeah, it was, and, and it was interesting too because uh, the initial concept was a little different than that, and uh, it, it changed because yeah. it was, you know, just one of those deals where there was there was a lot more showbiz involved, and we all just felt like we, you know, it'd be better if it was 
wrestling as opposed to you know a lot of the bells and whistles mm-hmm. um and and here's the thing man and it was the same man remember um like with rock and you know he, he first starts and people hated him yeah uh, and you know and then eventually you see i mean you know, he's this huge superstar it was the same with rome you know, um, you could tell that at some point because of his talent, because of his charisma, uh, that was all going to change. And, and it has now, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to get there. And sometimes getting there is a little uncomfortable because, you know, why, why are we doing this right now? And it's not working out like we would want it to. Well, that's like kind of instant gratification. And you have to understand that you're planting seeds for something on down the line. Mm-hmm. Um and I was always okay with that. Uh, you know, at, at times it would, it would get a little frustrating. Cause like, man, that's not the reaction we wanted. But I think <laughs> now we can look back and say, yeah, it kind of worked out like we wanted it to. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer in certain cases, but it eventually we get to the point where we want to get to, regardless of how long it takes. And you know, like you said, that kind of goes for anything. Um, that was around the same point, 2014, 2015, you're winding down your in-ring career. Obviously, as we mentioned earlier, elected as the mayor of uh, Knox County, Tennessee, and doing your thing now. And you're one of the elite people to have that distinction of being successful, both in wrestling and politics, having two very successful careers in two very different realms um, let's say in an alternate universe, you aren't elected and when you are in the late 2010s, do you still continue wrestling? Like, what does that avenue look like? Was it still pursuing politics regardless? I don't know. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I, I, I assume I probably would have done something with WWE, whether it's in ring mm-hmm. or behind the scenes and probably a combination of both, actually. Um uh, I've had the two greatest jobs anyone could ever want, man. I've been a WWE superstar and mayor of my hometown. Uh, so I, I'm incredibly fortunate. Uh, and, and, you know, even if I hadn't been elected, uh, you know, again, yeah, uh, I could always, in, in WWE, um, you know, I, I'd have been okay, for sure. Uh, and it just would have been a matter of figuring out at that point you know, how I could contribute to the company. Uh and, and, and what would be the best way to do that? Uh, but yeah, I, I would have carried on in some capacity. I don't think I would have, I probably wouldn't have pursued politics anymore because I would have figured out oh, that's not for me. Um, and, you know, who knows at that point, I'd been like, ah, you know, it's probably for the best anyway. And because uh, I, I really enjoyed my time, love my time in WWE, no matter what. Yeah. And you talk about that. I mean, the last couple of years, I mean, it's been five or six years now the, since you've been elected as the, you know, like I said, the mayor of Knox County and just the experience you've had doing that, how it compares to wrestling, any similarities, differences in your position and just how satisfying it's been for you. This is something you've always wanted to do. And uh, now you're in the position that you're in again, only an elite, elite few former WWE superstars can say that. Just talk about that experience from the last five or six years and how that kind of is, like you said, the gratification you get after everything you accomplished in the ring the you know it's cheesy but the smiles you put on faces for such a long time <laughs> yeah, you're doing that in a different way now you know as the mayor of knox county and just how you're affecting people in a bit of a different way than you were when you were in the ring yeah this is again this is a great job uh it has its challenges and it has its stresses but of course uh, it, it, it is a great job um and just feeling like i'm able to contribute to our community and um They'll make it a better place. Uh, and and really, I think that I have a unique advantage because of my background at WWE uh, is that you know, I, I can bring attention to uh, our community that a lot of people wouldn't be able to. And I can do some stuff that other people can't just because of who I am mm-hmm. uh, and just because of my background. Uh, and that's one of the things that you know we, we really try to do, uh, me and my team is figure out ways that we can use uh, my fame and my celebrity from WWE uh, to help make Knox County a better place, or at least to bring some attention to Knox County, uh, which hopefully will make it in turn a better place. And I'm sure going off of that, that a lot of people in Knox County just see you as Glenn Jacobs and don't either remember or know you from your Kane days and just know you as their mayor. But I'm sure there's a lot of people that obviously remember you as Kane. When you go to like book signings and conventions and you do a lot of that sort of stuff in the last couple of years in between your obviously, uh, you know, mayor duties and stuff like that. Can you talk about how people are just starting to see you as Kane and that, or I'm sorry, as Glenn Jacobs in that area. And they don't look to your wrestling past and how, if that might be weird for you, if that's something that you're used to at this point. Yeah, it's something I'm used to at this point. 
Uh, but there are a lot of people actually <laughs> that still, I get called Mayor Kane all the time. Uh, and I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Um, it, it's a difference, of uh, you know, but still, I mean, I think one of the advantages again, that I had coming from where I did is that I'm used to being in the spotlight and in the public eye. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually comfortable with that now. Um, and just the coolest thing, man, is to be able to brighten someone's day. And I said the cliche of putting smiles on faces. And yeah, it's a cliche, but it's also true. And that's the greatest gift that WWE gave me uh, is the fact that, you know, someone wants to shake my hand and you know, take a picture or whatever. I mean, we I take it for granted. And I'm sure a lot of other people in my position also take it for granted. Um, but that's a blessing to, to be able to bring joy to someone just by taking a picture or shaking their hand or acknowledging them. Mm. Uh, that's, that, that is kind of a big deal. And whether I do it as mayor or whether I do it as Kane, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Um, and, and, and it is cool. And it's, it's cool to, you know, to go out and meet wrestling fans and to hear the stories. Um, and the thing is, almost everybody is super cool and just wants to tell you their story story. And in many cases, what you meant to them, especially mm-hmm. in their childhood. And I mean, that again, that's just something, if you're not in my shoes, it's something that you just can't understand. And it's just incredibly rewarding. I mean, such a decorated resume, being a mayor, WWE Hall of Famer. And one thing a lot of people tend to forget, an actor as well, being in both See No Evil movies, (laughs) See No Evil, See No Evil 2. And there's been so much lore around those movies. I personally love both of those movies, specifically that first one. There's such like cult classics all these years later. There's so many wild stories surrounding like the making of that movie and like ideas that went into it from Vince himself. Can you share (laughs) stuff that like was may have been cut out? Like there is some wild stuff out there. I don't know how much of that you're privy to, though. Yeah, um, for me, that was uh, it's just a job and showing up every day. And <laughs> yeah. movies are the most boring thing in the world to make because you show up, you do your thing. Yeah. Uh, it's hurry up and wait. Uh, and yeah, and then there's, you know, the creative stuff. And I wasn't really that involved in any of the creative things. Um, I will tell you that I prefer the live action of WWE to making movies. I'm sure. Yeah. It's just it's just a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but nevertheless, those are great experiences. Uh, and to see the creativity and uh, I came away with a new pre- appreciation for acting and um, that that genre, uh, that, well, that medium uh, after doing some movies because I'm like, man, how do these, how do these people do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, on a sound stage, it's very antiseptic. What you see on the monitor is not what you'll see on the big screen. Uh, and you know, how, how do you do that? And, and, and who has the mind's eye that can put all that together? So very talented people, um, great experience. But again, I always prefer WWE. <laughs> I can see why. I mean, they're both great movies, but the instant gratification of the audience definitely doesn't get old. And speaking of that, as we wind down here, you've returned many times, again over the last 25 years in your career. Do you have a favorite return to WWE? I think the one from 2000 stands out to a lot of people. You've only gone from the show for like two weeks. You come back and get a monster reaction, but you made a lot. Is there one that stands out in your mind? Yeah, that one also... Um... Actually, also come in the corporate Kane deal. Um, mm, and yeah. you know, a lot of folks, not necessarily their favorite incarnation of Kane, uh, but it was shocking, it was surprising, and uh, I, it was just again, it was different. And uh, it's always cool to be able to step outside of the confines of the character. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite parts of my career was with Daniel Bryan and the Team Hell No stuff. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you look back and to say, 1998 and fast forward however many years 20 years and uh you're, you know kane is going to be the comedic element on the show right no way um but that's <laughs> yeah. what happened so it's just cool to be able to do that and uh, i think really to be able to uh to destroy people's preconceived notion of of what you could do it's really cool yeah. And as we wind down here, last question for you, Kane, uh, you talk about, I'm sure you've answered this before, any chance of a last match? The last time we saw you in the ring was during <laughs> the Thunderdome era, during COVID at the Royal Rumble. And obviously you and the Rumble are very synonymous and you're very busy nowadays, but is there any chance, do you feel like you've wrestled your final match? Oh man, never say never. That's a, that's the big catchphrase in WWE and it's <laughs> absolutely true. So uh, 
yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the future brings. But, Kane, this has been a lot of fun. Hey, hey. I appreciate the time. a and &E biography coming up uh, this Sunday, not on May 19th, but it's going to be March 12th, <laughs> and we're all looking forward to it. So, Glenn, Kane, thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it. It's been an honor. Thanks, Graham. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks so much.